Hey everyone, this is Nick at uh, Great Lakes Comic Con, and I am here with Paul Souls. Uh, you know, there's Tom Holland, there's Nicholas Hammond, there's Andrew Garfield, there's Tobey Maguire, but for me and a whole generation of Gen Xers and baby boomers, this is Spider-Man. Mr. Souls did the voice of the animated Spider-Man in the late 60s. It was the first time we'd ever seen Spider-Man on TV. It was the first time his origin had ever been told on TV. My career has been more good fortune than good management. And so the good luck to have been cast for the voice uh, of Spider-Man and Peter Parker in this series, the first of many big series where the voice tracks were done in Toronto, Canada, which is where I was born and raised. Spider-Man, the character, was probably only about four or five years old when this cartoon was first done. Did you know the Spider-Man character when you were uh, offered the job? No. I in a way ashamed or embarrassed to say. Because remember, it had only been about four years. And I don't think, I think a lot of people kind of looked at Stan Lee when he created it and said, what, you've got a superhero who was wearing a full costume, he's not very good getting it on with the girls, and he's a scientist and teenager. I mean, this is not a superhero. Well, Lee persisted, of course, and the rest is legend. Now, as I said at the top of the interview, I'm extremely biased, but for my money, no one has ever played that character better than you. You captured Peter Parker and Spider-Man both so perfectly. How did you prepare to play the role? How did you tackle the role, if you will? I think you're very kind, but for a person like me, not a big stud, uh, wildly good-looking, right? Peter Parker was a lot easier to play. An earnest guy, enjoy taking pictures, keen to be a good employee, work for J. Jonah Jameson. To play Spidey though, a superhero, uh, was not that easy. The great legendary Paul Souls, it's been my privilege and pleasure to interview you, sir. Thank you so much.